Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who will well and teach well, because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect, and shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. Shalom to you, sincere sisters that's listening in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Irazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much this is the second lesson of um, the question on my comment board. Um, I'm going to read it again. Because this is the second part. Now, I did the first one, which was about the laws. Now, this is going to be going into repentance. Now, if you are a person that have the belief of the ways of the religion, the 501c3 of Christianity, you don't need to watch this video. Because you're not going to get it. You're going to be trying to debate and do all that other stuff. Which, you can do that on my comment board, but I'm not going to reply. Because at the end of the day, you don't have the understanding of the scriptures. You don't have the understanding of the scriptures. And if you quote John 3.16, that's talking about the Israelites. And if you use Revelation 1 and 16, that's talking about the Israelites. And if you use Gal Galatians 3 and 28, that's talking about the Israelites. And if you use Romans 11 11, that's talking about Israel. So all those scriptures that I just quoted that you guys are using are all referring to Israel. That's all talking about Israel. So to, I'm going to beat you to the punch. All those precepts is all talking about Israel. Israel. The nation of Israel. That's what it's talking about. That's not talking about natural Gentiles. Repentance is only for the Israelites. So, <clears throat> Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. That's what this lesson will be titled as. And we're going to read on the comment board again. He says, Shalom, uh, can you make a lesson on laws and repentance only for Israel? So, I did a lesson yesterday about the laws. And now this is my reply back again to him about repentance repentance is only for the israelites and that is just common sense because why would the lord try to give repentance to every single person of the world even to the natural gentiles the lord never made a covenant with them so it wouldn't make sense for them to have to repent for sins when the lord never made a covenant with them because the israelites they were doing we used to do uh, animal sacrifices for sins the heathens wasn't doing animal sacrifices for sins. So why would repentance need to be for them when the Lord wasn't dealing with them to begin with? All right. It's just common sense. <coughs> but we're going to make this simple. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. This is Matthew 1 and 21. And this is the prophecy which was given to, um, um, I think, believe it was Joseph. The, the, the biological father of the Messiah, which is going to hit a lot of nerves for people because they believe that Joseph was the adopt was a, was the adoptive father of the Messiah, which doesn't make sense. But yeah, this is uh, pretty much a, a vision that uh, Joseph got from the angel when she was telling him about him bearing a son and all that. Right? It says that she shall. This is when the angel was speaking on to Joseph, the the biological father Yahweh Shai. This is Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, talking about Mary, which her name is Miriam, right? She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. Now, right here, it says Jesus here. But when you go into the Paleo Hebrew, right? You go into the blue letter, go into the Paleo Hebrew, it goes into H3091, uh, H3091, H3091, which is Yahweh Shai, right? Yah means he, Yahweh Shai means savior or deliverer. So, it says Jesus here, but you, you got to go into the Hebrew. When you go into the Hebrew translation of this word Jesus here, it goes into the meaning of uh, Jesus, right? Which, that's incorrect, right? So, when you go into the Hebrew of that, it goes into uh, H3091, which is Yahweh Shai. It says, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, if the Messiah died for everybody to get repentance why would the scriptures say for he shall save his that his there is literally speaking plural it wouldn't say his people there it would say all people there 
It doesn't say all people. It says his people there. So this is what people get misconstrued with when they when they read these scriptures. Because they don't really fully take the time to understand what the scriptures is giving you. What the scriptures is 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 showing you. Right? They're not interpreting the scriptures correctly. So let's read it again. Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. For he shall save his people from their sins. See, so that his there is speaking plural. Like if a person has a phone, that's his phone. A person has a nice shirt on, that's his shirt, right? That's not all everyone's shirt. That's that person's shirt. That's speaking plural. It's speaking plural. His people, it belongs to him. His people. So when the Messiah died, he died for the Israelites. That's his people. The Messiah was an Israelite. He was of the line of David, right? He was of the line of David. Joseph was his biological father, which that's a whole other subject. But when it says, for he shall save his people from their sins, that's, give, that's speaking plural there. It will say all people there. It doesn't say all people. It says his people. So it's telling you, it's referring to the Israelites. It's talking about the Israelites, man. So he, the Messiah, he died for the Israelites, right? He died for the Israelites. And I don't know why, but my spirit... Is telling me to get out that. I always get this precept out, but I get it out anyway. <clears throat> the Messiah died for the Israelites, though, and I want to back myself up with what I'm saying. And we're going to read what Peter said on to the Israelites, because Peter he told the Israelites this. This is what he's spoken on to the Israelites. We clearly can see he's talking to Israel here, right? This is a. Uh, 1 Peter 1 and 20, it says, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the earth, but was manifest in these in these last times for you. Because when the Messiah stepped foot on the scene, that was the beginning of the last days. Which you can go to Hebrews 1 and 2, that talks about that. Hebrews 1 and 2 talks about that, right? Let me get that really quick. That's a whole other subject, but I just want to get that out. Everything I say, I want to just bring it out. We're going to prove, and then we're going to go back to that First Peter. This is Hebrews 1 and 2. It says, have in have in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So when the Messiah stepped foot on the scene, that was the beginning of the last days. We've been in the last days. We're in the last days now. It says, whom he have appointed heir of all things by whom all by whom also he made the world. You see that? So we've been in the last days since the Messiah first stepped foot on the scene. That was the beginning of the last days. And um, so like yeah. Getting back to the main point. Now we're going to go back. This is Hebrews um, 1 and 20. So I was reading the wrong scripture, I believe. But I'll start at verse 20, though. Um, I'm over confusing myself. So like, yeah. This is 1 Peter uh, 2 and First Peter 2 and 20. This is the precept I was supposed to be reading. I think I was reading the wrong precept. So if I was, I like it. This is 1 Peter 2 and 20. It says, For what glory is it if when ye be buffered for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? It says, But if when ye do well and suffer for it, it says, Ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with the Most High. Right? Verse 21. This is the, this is the precept I was supposed to do. But hey, that's just through the spirit, you know, the Lord still had me to bring it out. So uh first Peter two and twenty one. This is what I was supposed to actually get. It says, For even here on two were ye called, it says, because Yahweh Shai also suffered for us, right? Leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You see that? So we shall follow in his steps, right? Verse twenty two, it says, Who it says, Who did it says, Who did no sin? Neither was God found in his mouth. Verse 23. It says who. It says who when he was revealed. Revealed not again. Right. When he suffered. He threatened not. But committed himself to him. That judges righteously. Right. And even though the Messiah. He, he had to go through all that. He didn't speak no God. He just did what the Lord told him to do. Verse 24. It says who. It says who. It says who. His own self. Bared our sins. And in his own body on a tree. You see that? 
So the Messiah, he gave his life up for the Israelites. He was a sacrificial lamb for the Israelites. And we just proved that meeting in Matthew 1 and 21. He shall save his people from their sins because we broke the old covenant. We broke the old covenant. We sinned. So the Lord, the Heavenly Father, he sent down his only begotten son to die for the nation of Israel so we can get this second chance. This is why we are in temporal grace. Not all people. We are in temporal grace because we broke the old covenant. We sinned. We broke the old covenant. We don't longer have to do uh, animal sacrifices, blood animal sacrifices. Because back in the ancient world, you used to do animal sacrifices, blood animal sacrifices for sins. We don't have to do that anymore because Yahweh Shai, he put his life up on the line for us. So now we're under a, a, a temple of grace period where we can repent. He was that sacrificial lamb. All right. First Peter 2 and 24, it says, who, it says, who his own self bared our sins in his, in his own body on a tree. That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose strips, it says, who, by whose stripes ye were healed, right? Because through Yahweh Shai's blood, we're able to have temple grace. We're able to repent now, right? Verse 25, for ye were as sheep going astray, which the Israelites did. We were as sheep going astray. We went away from the Lord. We started following the ways of the heathen. We were cast out as, as heathens, as Gentiles, as heathens. Okay? It says, But are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. You see that? So the Lord, Yahweh Shai, he died for us to be able to have repentance. Without him, we wouldn't be able to repent. <clears throat> Matthew 5 and 24, But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see that? So the Lord came down on the earth for the Israelites. That, that was his whole mission, to, to die for the nation of Israel, to be a sacrificial lamb for the Israelites. He came on the earth. He set up his 12 apostles to the Israelites. The Israelites were scattered. They were scattered amongst the, the heathens, the Gentiles, the natural Gentiles. The Israelites were scattered among them. So he set up prophets, right? He set up men these men to go out to those regions and and preach onto the lost sheep of the house of israel so that's who repentance is for is for the israelites the messiah died for the israelites this is matthew 10 and 1 and i'm gonna read from from 1 all the way down to 7 so you can fully understand who repentance is for because a lot of people they try to they read Apostle Paul's letters and they try to justify that he went to natural heathens. But those Gentiles that he went to were Israelite foreigners. Because during that time, you had the um, you had the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was ruling in that time when Yahweh Shai was on foot on the scene. You had the Roman Empire. This is why you got to know the secular history or you're never going to understand the New Testament. When you go into the secular history of Daniel 7, Israel fell. So the heathens came. You had the you had the um, Babylonian Empire, right? The Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. When you go to the Greek Empire, the Israelites were Hellenized under the Seleucid rule. You had the Seleucid Empire, which took place in um, I think it's um, um, under the Seleucid Empire. You had the uh, you had Antiochus, the Antiochus. You had Antiochus the first, the second, the third, the fourth Epiphanes. That's a whole nother topic, but I just want to sum this up. To understand that those Gentiles were Israelite foreigners. They were Hellenized during the Seleucid rule under uh, 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 Antioch, the fourth Epiphanes, right? Which he Hellenized the Israelites. They couldn't keep the laws, right? They couldn't keep the high holy days. They couldn't keep the Sabbaths. They couldn't circumcise their children. If they were caught doing any of that, they were executed and put to death. You can read that in First Maccabees. So when you read in the New Testament and it talks about the Gentiles there, that's talking about the Israelite foreigners. You had two types of Gentiles. You had Israelite foreigners and you had uh, natural heathens. All right. So the natural heathens, the Lord was not, the natural Gentiles, the Lord was not dealing with. He was dealing with those Gentiles, the Israelites, which were, which were Hellenized. Right. They were Hellenized. They were speaking Greek, dressing Greek. They're in the ways of the Greeks. Just probably paraphrase. So when you go into the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire, Roman Empire, the Israelites were Hellenized during them during them time periods. So Yahweh Shai, the Israelites were all scattered amongst those places. So Yahweh Shai set up his apostles to go to those regions, like Apostle Paul. He went and wrote those letters to the Romans, right? When you read Romans, the letters in Romans, those are Israelites that were in Rome. You go into uh, 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 First Corinthians, Ephesians. Those are Israelites in those cities. The city of Corinth is an ancient city. 
That's where the Israelites were. You had Israelites were. They were called Corinthians because they were in the city of Corinth. Just like the city of just like the uh the, the city of Creek, right? They're called they call them Cretans there, the city of Creek. They were called Christian Christ, 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 how do you say Cretans, but they were Israelites. When you read in first Titus, you had Titus the first chapter, right? You had Titus and uh Apostle Paul go to the city of Creek. That's all another topic, but we'll be here all day. But that's my main point. That's to those Israelite foreigners. Right? Matthew 10 and 1, Salakia. It says, When he had called unto him his twelve disciples. You see that? He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Right? Which which the Lord did. Which the Lord had his prophets to do. Now look. I'm reading up here so people can understand who those twelve apostles went to. They didn't go to all people. Right? And if you want to go talk about Cornelius, Cornelius was an Israelite. You can't use Cornelius. Cornelius was an Israelite. Right? And if you go into that Agrippa thing, Apostle Paul was worried about being afflicted, being being executed. Right? So that's why he said what he said. It was not he was not trying to save Agrippa to, to come to the truth. No. You gotta understand that. Agrippa was an Edomite. This is continuing. Verse 2, it says, Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. You see that? So these are the twelve apostles that the Lord Yahweh Shai set up, right? The first is Simon, who is called Peter, right? You had Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, right? And John, his brother, and Philip, and Bartholomew, right? Thomas, Matthew, the, the, the publican, James, right? Son of Alphaeus, right? And, Leban Le Le and Leb Lebius, right? Whose surname is Thaddeus. Right, verse four. Simon the Canaanite. Simon, si uh, Simon was an Israelite. Yeah, it says Canaanite there, but he was an Israelite. He lived in the city of Canaan. He was an Israelite. It says in Judas Iscariot, who was an Israelite, right? Who also betrayed him. It says these twelve apart. These twelve Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, saying, "Go not to the way of the Gentiles." Now this Gentile here is talking about natural heathens. It's not talking about. Israelite foreigners here. This Gentile here is talking about natural heathens. Go not to the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, into ye not. So he told them, don't go into the ways of the, don't go the way of the Gentiles, the natural heathens. All right. Verse six, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. And it says, and as ye go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that was the mission of the apostles. That's why the, the letters was written to those regions of those areas there of, of uh, first uh, first Thessalonians, right? Thessalonians, that's the city. Thessalonians, Corinthians, right? Ephesians, um, uh, Romans, right? The letters of Romans, right? Um, Galatians, the city of Galatia. Those are all ancient cities where Israelites were dwelling at. They were called Corinth, uh, uh, Corinthians and all of that because they were in those regions. Those were Israelites all in those areas there all that all those letters that Apostle Paul written to those churches those were Israelites those were Israelite foreigners Israelites all those letters that he written all those letters you see Gentile there those are Israelite foreigners that Apostle Paul written those letters to so repentance is all for Israel it's all talking about Israel there all that's all talking about Israelites all right this is Acts 5 and 31 that's get to the main point right Acts 5 and 29 it says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. Verse 30. It says, The Most High, our fathers, raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hung on a tree. You see that? It says, verse 31, Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance, right? To give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins. So repentance is only given to the Israelites. Because people like to try to use John 3.16. But John 3.16, that's pertaining to the Israelites. Because when you go into the meaning of that word world there, that goes into the Greek word of cosmos. Which means constitution or government. That's talking about the Israelites. Right? And to validate that, that that world there, talking about government. You can go into entomology, talking about government. That's talking about the Israelites. Which translates also, you can go to Revelation 14, and Revelation 14 and 1 talks about that. And that lamb, that's referring to Yahweh Shai, right? Which goes to John 1 and 29. And you can just keep going on. But this is referring to the Israelites, all right? 
Repentance is only for the Israelites. The heathen nations cannot repent. They can read the Bible all they want to. They, you can read the Bible all you want to. You can say you believe in the Lord. You can do all of that. I'm talking about the natural heathen because you got Israelites out there. Don't get me wrong. You got Israelites out there that look like other the other nations, but they Israelites. We have that too. You got Israelites. They may not look like a so-called Negro, Hispanic, Native American Indian. But they are an Israelite because their father is of the sea line of a so-called Negro, Hispanic, Native American. They are Israelite of their, due to their father's lineage. So you got speckled birds out there. So I'm not talking about the speckled birds. I'm talking about natural heathens. Natural heathens. They cannot repent. Salvation, salvation ain't for them either. It's only for the Israelites. When we say that, people get upset. They get mad. But hey, it is what it is. It's prophecy. Accept it. Hebrews 12 and 17. This is to prove that repentance is only for the Israelites. It says, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the inherited the blessing, right? It says he was rejected, talking about Esau, for he found no place of repentance, though he saw it carefully with tears. So the heathen can't repent. Esau can't repent. The heathen nations can't repent. Now, don't get me wrong. You got Israelites that are scattered among those heathens. They're scattered amongst those 17 heathen nations, right? Israel is, the, you know. You got the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native American Indians. These nations, the Israelites here, the 12 tribes, the nation of Israel are scattered among number two all the way down to 18. So they may look like them, but that, but they're not them though. They may look like them. They may look like number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I mean 18, right? They may look like these people here, but they're not. They are an Israelite because of their father's lineage. So you got Israelites out there, again, that may look like number two all the way down to 18. They may look like them on the outside, but their father could be of num be of Judah all the way down to Issachar. We have that. You got speckled birds out there. You got Israelites that look like other nations. But repentance is only for the Israelites, man. 1 Corinthians 7 and 14, it says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So there you go. If my people, who's that talking about? Israel. Remember, I read yesterday, Exodus uh, 4 and 22. Israel is my people. Israel is my firstborn, right? The Lord is dealing with the Israelites here. The Lord is dealing with the Israelites. Repentance is only for the Israelites. So there you go. It's only for the Israelites. 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Who are the promises given to? The Israelites, the promise. That's given to the Israelites. You can read that in Romans, the ninth chapter. It says, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward, to, uh, uh, to, long suffering to usward, Salakia, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this is talking about the Israelites. Repentance for the Israelites. Yahweh Shai said it. Matthew 4 and 17, from the time Yahweh Shai began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? And we read that same thing, knowing that it's talking about the Israelites, because we went to, we went right here, the Lord told the apostles to do what? Verse 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see that? So that was, that's all talking about Israel. Matthew 4, 17, from that time, Yahweh Shai began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's talking about the Israelites. So repentance is only for the Israelites. And uh, Salakia earlier, I believe I read the wrong scripture to that beloved brother. I read the wrong scripture. So um, again, Salakia, I may have uh, read the wrong scripture in the beginning of this lesson. But yeah, we've been in the last days though since the Messiah stepped foot on the scene, but I meant to go to 1 Peter uh, 2 and uh, Salaki on that. Um, but yeah, repentance is only for the Israelites, man. Okay? It's not for all nations, all people. It's only for the Israelites. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I pray that this lesson was edifying. Until then, on to the next one. Giving all honors and glories and praise to Yahweh by Shema Shai, by Shema Kakodash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who will well and teach well. Peace, blessings, salutations, and hopeful elect. And shalom unto you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word and truth and sincerity. Shalom unto you, sincere sisters, that's listening in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Razaka from the servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And I pray and hopefully this lesson was edifying. On to the next one again. Shalom.